All right, everybody, are we ready to play some Dungeons and Dragons in the realm of Barovia? Ready. Our usual cast is back with us, and last we left, um, our favorite half orc barbarian chef had just lost his mind and uh, beat an, a would be attacker almost to death. Um, but Chance finally got the final blow. Uh, this this attacker was was not easy for our our companions. So um, and the worst part was they had to kill him with his wailing, crying, mourning, grieving father upstairs. So uh, in truth, though, you, know, you all know the father should have known that something was not right. But uh, as you finish them off, this Mark starts to make his way down the steps, uh, kind of pushing chance back a little bit not pushing him but just kind of you know, forcing him to take a step back so he can come down and he looks down and he sees Doro and goes oh my friend Doro what has happened to you and you can hear the uh, father upstairs crying and wailing still and then he looks at looks at you chance and says please tell me it was quick painless I heard much struggling, but I hope it was not as bad as it sounded. Chance is going to kind of just look him up and be like, get out of my way. And he's going to just push up past him and not say a word. <laughs> Climb the ladder. <laughs> I follow. Like, I was, I was right behind him. I follow. All right, so you're going up the stairs. Let me go ahead and move you right over there. And. Hildy was going up as well. Bam, bam. Um, I guess I'll, I'll like, go up to Ismark and be like, I'm really sorry. We tried to end it as quick as we could. Use your friend. Yes, I, we knew each other since we were young. I'm a little older than him. And he looks, and he looks down at him and his eyes just kind of grow wide. He doesn't seem to be too concerned with, like, the, the, the cuts or the wounds or anything like that and uh, he, he kind of reaches down and, and holds his jaw for a minute almost like he's expect, inspecting him the way like a, a crime scene investigator would and he says by the lands please do not let this happen to my sister Irina and he's sitting there he almost is like he's muttering a prayer to himself to some unknown god or, un, or possibly whatever god this uh, church is dedicated to Please, do not let it be so. Uh, what? What are you? What? What are you talking about? I think what he's talking about is his sister. He might turn into whatever Doru became. Hmm. What do you know? Do you know what he is? Is Mark? He was very intent on eating us. Apparently, he is a he looks to be spawn of a vampire. Not yeah. strong, but starved. Driven mad with an unquenchable hunger and thirst for the blood of humans. Oh, so you you can turn someone into a vampire. I guess. It seems so. Okay. He starts to turn and, and walking up the steps. He moves fast. Come, we must bury my father. Quickly and be done with this. I mean, but should, should we bury him too? I will leave that up to Brother Donovich. Yeah, okay. We should probably go check on Brother Donovich. It sounds yeah. like he's and mass upstairs. All right, so I'm going to move you guys up. Yag, what are you up to? Yag's sort of coming to his sense of uh, look at the casualty and walk away silently. <laughs> All right, so Yag comes up behind you guys, you know, a little bit more somber uh, than he was 
just a few moments before. Uh, Hildegard, as you walk out to the um, hallway, Chance, um, uh, Chance, you walk out, you kind of glance to one side, and you do see Brother Donovich just sitting there in a heap on, a, on his uh, bottom, his knees in front of him, just sort of shaking against the wall, staring off into space, almost like he's all cried out, but he's just, you know, kind of lost in his own mind at this point. And yeah, that's Chance kind of gives him a look. Just like a little, just a low growl, like, mm. and then he'll kind of uh, turn and head towards the exit. And he's just gonna plop down on the steps and uh, unroll a cigarette. All right. Or I guess remove it from his his coat, and light it up. It's, it's hand rolled. All right. Cool. I'm kind of imagining him kind of doing a little snap, like a little canter for something to kind of uh, pop it. Uh, it popped the, the cigarette to light, maybe even doing a little uh, a little zap with some of it. Yeah, like his little his little spark lighter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he does like three or four snaps before it finally catches, but eventually it does because it's just a spark. But yeah, that works. And then uh, Hildy, so you see the the brother sitting there on the floor, just kind of shaking, staring off into space. How long was your son down there? I mean, how... For how long was he like this? He just blinks and kind of looks over at you for a minute. And he looks up and he says... My... My son? Do, do you know my son, Doru? He was... Such a good boy. Very hungry of late, though. I do not know what became of him. I do not know. He, he seems to be kind of babbling incoherently uh, at this point, like he's in the utmost of shock. I'm sure he's better now. Yes, 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 I'm sure, I'm sure he is. I, I'm sure he is. Tell me, do, do you pray to the Lord of the morning? And he gestures into the church. I do pray, but... Not to the God you refer to. Oh, well, prayer to my God is not for everyone. There are many, many faiths. I respect and love all faiths equally, as do as does my son, Doru. Perhaps you will meet him someday. He is a handsome boy, a good boy. And he just kind of starts to stand up and shuffle back into the, uh, into the, to the destroyed church. And he's kind of just muttering to himself. You, eventually, you hear him start, like, kind of humming at the, an odd, kind of a dirge-type tune to himself. So sad. Ismark walks out and he kind of nods to you, Hildegard, and, and says, Everyone, come with me. And let us bury my father and be done with this. All right, let's go. Chance will step up and, uh, walk over off the steps and he'll follow all right he's just kind of keeping his own dip. if you guys want to follow east mark and uh he kind of he gets all of you guys to help pick up the, the grave again but let, let, move your tokens around behind the church there it's not a huge deal to be honest it's more theater of the mind point anyway i'll just move whoever oh, i can i'm trying to easier. even find it Yeah, again, not a huge deal. If you guys just bring yourselves back to that area, that works. Okay. All right, so as you guys move around, you kind of carry the, um, the, the makeshift coffin around. And um, uh, once you get there, there are a couple of 
spades lying against this building over here. And this Mark has you guys lower father to the ground and he says, over to here is the Kulyanovich plot. And he leads you through, you know, several gay, uh, graves to uh, old stones. Uh, it looks like one of the older. They, they look a, bit, a little bit fancier than some of the others. You see several just wooden crosses put into the ground, wooden holy symbols. Um, some just nothing more than rocks with uh, the, an attempt at names carved into them. Uh, but various various types of graves. Again, when you get here, you can tell that this that these graves are a little bit more uh, noble, a little bit more descended from royalty, uh, a little bit higher dollar than than your average. Um, uh, like they, you could tell that the stonework they were paid for rather than um, uh, just thrown together shoddily. So Ismark starts digging, and um, there's about there's probably four shovels there. He says. I will dig constantly. The rest of you may take turns if you wish to help. If not, I understand, but we will be here much longer. Um, I'll I'll grab a shovel and start helping. Yeah, I can help too. I can also help. Chivalrous women. Gotcha. Ah, there we go. I was I was gonna say, look, look, the, the guy's letting all the women do the work. So uh, maybe I'm just old fashioned. <laughs> he'll take he'll take a turn. He's not gonna go right away. He'll, he'll take a turn. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, there, there's only there's only two extra shovels. So again, it'll be you know just if, if everybody's stepping up for a turn, then uh, it takes about an hour and a half, maybe two hours to dig deep. It's real quiet. Um, uh, Ismark isn't saying much. Uh, the one thing he does say, uh, and then I'll leave you guys to your devices. As he looks at each of you, goes, "Please, I beg of you, do not tell Arena that Brother Donovich did not perform last rites. As far as she needs to know, it was a beautiful service and a beautiful sermon spoken by the priest." Um, question to the DM: Is the is the casket like? Uh, locked? No, it's an open wooden casket. Okay, uh, Hildy just gonna say, I can perform some last rite, if you wish. Yes, anything would be better than nothing. Okay, Hildegard's just gonna, uh, touch her holy symbol and put her hand, uh, to his father and cast gentle repose. I can, I can put the, the description of the spell in the chat. Oh no, no, it's it's absolutely fine. It's it's more for um, uh, aesthetic. So absolutely, Ismark actually starts to cry a little bit. And just kind of puts his head down on his um, uh, uh, spade for just a minute, and he's and he's like, um, uh, he's like, thank you, thank you so much for that, so kind. My father was a hard man, but he always did right by me and my sister. He sounds like he was a really good person. He was, indeed. I'm sorry that we never met him, but the least I can do is this, and then I drew craft like the beautiful tingling vines that go over his, uh, his coffin, and they just sprout beautiful white flowers. Oh wow, I love it. I'd give both you and uh, Hildy inspiration. Actually, Hildy, do you have inspiration right now? Or no? Yeah, I got one for a stupid joke I did last time. <laughs> uh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> you can get inspiration in various ways. Oh uh, yeah, that's, uh, and I'm pretty sure I just do Zana one for the recap, so um, I'm old, but I'm not that forgetful yet. But uh, so yeah, uh, that's that's actually awesome. So he, 
he, he kind of uh, stops digging and climbs out and just sits there for a few moments and looks down. Thank you all very much. I believe it was some god's divine will that you find your way to this land. Perhaps you are all here to help me and my sister. But let us not tarry. Before the day grows long, we must see if we can get her moving. Right. Yeah, whatever you need. Okay. Do you guys kind of sit there silently for that time, for the most part, besides what you all do to comfort Eastmark? Um, I feel like I'd probably be eyeing up Yogg to see if he looks, like, angry or not. Because I don't know what he's, he's doing. <laughs> Yogg is just going to sit there in silence with a solemn expression on his face. <laughs> Planned, but you get mm -hmm. good of you. Okay. All right. So after a time, um, you guys uh, finish the, the burial, and um, uh, you, you hear uh, Eastmark say a couple of words. He says, "I will return and put your name on the stone soon enough, Father. But for now, you must see to our dear Irina." And he turns, and you guys start heading back down the street towards the uh, mansion, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you approach the mansion, and uh, go in. Obviously, it still looks to be downtrodden. Uh, the, the way the nights are there, as you guys just experienced the prior night, uh, it, it's pretty hellish. Um, you go in, and... Um, Ismark calls out for Irina, and uh, he says, Irina, it is done. Please, tell me you are ready, as we have spoken about. And you hear the creaking of a door, and uh, uh, Irina walks out, and um, she looks, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let me let you, let Irina tell you how Irina looks. Let me see. Irina is wearing a red tunic. A duelist, tailcoat, leathers, a white blouse, off-white. She has wild hair, the standard stance of a woman who's been rather torn as of late, imprisoned by her window, and she looks at you all with eyes amiss with hopelessness. She looks for something, anything really, and she turns to her brother. Who I assume is in the room, yes. Yes. He is. Isma, he... is this them? Yes, Irina. These are the ones that will help us escape the shadow of the castle and the devil that lies within. Did you hear everything okay there, Arena? I did. All right, and guys, welcome. This is Grace. Grace is a good friend of Zana. She is going to be <laughs> she is going to be guest starring uh, for this session as Arena. And um, awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's just a single Hi, session. Everyone. Maybe a few in the future yeah. here and there. Well, uh, Chance looks up from the uh, kind of the bottom of the stairs and uh, inclines deeds done your father's been buried she looks almost she looks away from you and nods solemnly in broad daylight no less she turns to her brother with a knowing gaze yes I know he was supposed to be buried just before morning, but Brother Donovich performed an excellent service, a beautiful ritual that brought even Doru, stuffy little Doru, his son, to tears. 
and he kind of glances to each of you guys with uh he's a little wide-eyed a little um because uh, you guys see kind of a plea in his eyes uh, chance looks like he's about to say something and just like grumbles he's like mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll like nod, like, yep. Well yeah, done. he was real tall, up. <laughs> uh, make a perception check for me, Arena, if you could. Um, I know it's new to you, so on your character sheet, when you have it open, I actually gave you a more spruced up version of the character sheet. So um, if you want to open that and then just find the perception and click the word, it'll roll it. In the chat. Were you surprised, Lana? Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to talk to Grace after this session. <laughs> For sure. Grace, we, are you mad at me? No. I love you. Love you too, darling. All right, so yeah, you, you don't really notice much. The only thing you notice is it looks like that... Um, they definitely are, uh, most of them are pretty much covered in kind of dirt and filth. Uh, like they, they dug the graves themselves. Um, but that's not unusual considering a lot of the people in the village have been gone. Mm. So, she starts walking about the room. Tell me your names. I'm afraid I'm not acquainted with our house guests. Um, I'm Nyla. Nice to meet you, Irina. Shall I like the wave. <laughs> My name is Hildegard. Uh, well, uh, you can call me Chance. And a uh, very um, live, kind of commoner looking fellow. Uh, it's a little faux salute. With that, that two-fingered gesture. You notice she checks all of your ears. Yeah, uh, Coleman actually has uh, kind of buried in his in his coppery mess of of, of hair. He has um, kind of pointed ears. Ooh. Yeah, so does Nyla. Or Yag, you'd have to uh, probably get a step stool to be able to see his ears, but uh, Yag is a, a very tall, almost seven foot oh. tall half orc. Very large man, noted. Yeah, name's Yog. I'm, I'm Sona. I'm sorry for your loss. The service was nice, though. Zana, the grief shall pass. It is commonplace here. Yeah, so we're learning. Well, with any luck, we'll be able to travel out into Velaki, right? Get out of this hellhole of a village. Velaki. You mean to actually leave? I, I do. And I believe your brother here is paying us to escort you. Wait. Yes, that is correct. Hurts to insult. Ismark, you are coming. I will come most of the way, sister. But once there, once we have you safely out of the shadow of the mountain, and out of the devil's grasp, then... I wish to come back here and perhaps take up father's mantle, perhaps rebuild and hopefully someday repopulate the land as more people travel through and pass through and show them that Barovia village, though in the shadow of the devil's mountain, we can survive. But my first concern is you, my sea star. Ah, oh, he's Mark. Have you no love for me? We have just lost our father to the howling torment of the wolves and the zombies. I have been locked in my room for days, and you, you are not coming but halfway. 
Are you... are you mad? He'll come for you. He will. He will not. I do not think his gaze is on me. Besides, someone must speak for these people. Those that remain. If I may. And, uh, Chance kind of steps a little. Uh, there's been something on my mind. You've lot have been held in the relative safety of your house. Whatever's been outside hasn't been able to come in. Torment as it is, they've been waiting. We'll need something of a head start if we're going to be venturing out. There's no promising that they won't surround us, and, well, without the safety of the house, we yeah, might be looking yeah. at a right bit of trouble. So, if we had to get Irina safely out of the city, and I think that is the goal, is Mark, it might behoove you to, well, wait in town, as it were. They know your presence at the Blood and the Vine, don't they? That they do. But I do not... She is already torn about me only going most of the way anyway. I do not... It is not very far to the Lockheed, perhaps only two days travel. Surely they would not miss me for a day, two at most. Um, go ahead and roll a perception check for me, Chance. Oh, he's not really good at this, oh. <laughs> you guys, you guys getting these sevens out of the way, these low rolls out of the way early <laughs> on. <laughs> he says, um, he says, uh, no, I, I think I must go. I think I will go. It, it does not take long. But, Irina, are you ready? I'm not Did so you much worried that? about the duration. I was worried about buying us time tonight. If there's some people that know that you're still here, they might know that Irina's here too. They might have a guess. Whatever it'll do, it'll buy us a little bit of time before those creepy crawlies surround us in the forest, where we ain't gotten the walls to protect them. But if you insist, it is your sister after all. I suppose we're in no position to negotiate. I hear your wisdom. I am no stranger to the forests of this land and the beasts within it. And he, he, Ismark looks over at Arena and she kind of starts to agree somewhat with Chance. And Chance, you can go ahead and roll perception again on with advantage. This is perception or persuasion? Persuasion. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I was gonna say this is a little different. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I should have had you roll that last time. So yeah, it might have been. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> um, so yeah, he says um, he he kind of nods, you know, with um, Irina sort of giving you the assist. Uh, he nods and says, "Very well." It will be so then, but you must make haste and leave now. Irina, I know it is harder for you to travel in the, in the daylight, but please, you must make haste before the devil can start to assail you. Where's a good place that we might be able to meet along the way? Somewhere for you to join us. Ah. <laughs> uh, the only, the only place I know of is the old bone grinder, but it is rumored that that place is cursed. Perhaps meet on the bottom of the hill near the old bone grinder. Follow All the right. old Swalich road out of town to the west. It is perhaps a day's, a day's march by foot. All right, we'll make camp there. Try and keep it low profile. We'll wait for you to continue the rest of the way to Balaki. Sound good? Yes. That, that will do. With any luck, and I do mean luck, Irina's pursuers will still be out here at the house. 
yeah, especially tonight, maybe. Yeah, like maybe even if you're at the tavern and you talk about how Arena's at the house and kind of play it up, then that'll help it even more, you know? Bah. That would oh, require that is... travelers. I'm what? sorry, did you go ahead, Arena? Oh, I said, oh, a diversion. Yeah. That's right. This town's small, but it's got eyes everywhere. My only concern would be probably the wolves that plague the lake. Cause they probably don't want to be forced around. Aye, well, no, never said it was going to be entirely easy. If the wolves find us, we'll dispatch them as best we can. That's our promise, is Mark. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we did it before, so... And not exactly clean. <laughs> Though it did make for a fine stew, Yog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but last night, the wolves, there were no alphas among them, from what I could hear. So clearly someone's leading them. Well, I suppose if we can figure out who, or... Maybe they'll buy into Ismark's rooms. That's the best hope we've got. Either way, it's a gamble. No two cents about it. I'm just saying maybe we should try to be really careful about how we go about this. What about... Hmm. I'm sure they don't know exactly what we look like. Maybe, uh, maybe Zana, you've got that coat of yours. Maybe oh. if it's got a hood or something, maybe Irina can wear it and we can smuggle her out. It ain't the first time that I've smuggled somebody out of somewhere. Yeah. And I kind of like begin to like slowly uh, take off my coat and then hand it very meekly over to Irina, very slowly. <laughs> Irina looks at you just curiously. Not a start of for a minute, stops. <laughs> Take the coat. Zana, for a very shy heart, you are very strong. She takes the coat and puts it on. Oh, I wouldn't really say that. <laughs> you tangled in the affairs of darkness. Uh, it's more like I'm a little bit more prepared for it. So I think I'll be fine. I'm just more worried about everyone else. She nods. Well, we just need to get you out of the cities and the prying eyes. Once we're set, we'll be hitting the road fast and hard. So you said it takes two days to get there? Give or, give or take. It depends on the weather and uh, how fast of a pace you keep, but two days is about the average general okay. walking distance with no distractions. Does that mean we're going on foot? Yes, sadly there are no livestock currently in town. I could mm. perhaps go bar attempt to barter with the Vistani women, but it is widely rumored no, that they are spies for the devil himself. Well, I think if you did that, that would probably kind of alert them that something's up. So it's probably better that you didn't. Mm. I agree. I do have some magic that can help with this journey if we wanted to go about it a little bit more discreetly. Oh, like what? Uh, I can cast a spell called uh, Pass Without a Trace. It lets the shadows cling to us, making it easier for us to go about unseen. That sounds Ooh, good. That sounds amazing. And if we're concerned about food, I also can create berries that can sustain us for pretty much a day. Wow. Is that right? That's well, really cool. Handy. I can do those berries too. So we'll probably <laughs> be all right so far as food supplies. Well, getting out of the city. 
Yeah, I mean, but considering food, you could even just hide. Are you a druid? Are you talking to me? Yeah, she nods. <laughs> no, I simply learned some of the... Some druidic spells along my travels. Oh, okay. And then Zana's just like meekly really smiling <laughs> to herself. I smile back. <laughs> and what was Yag about to say? Hmm? Yag was about to say something about food. Oh, no, I was just saying that you could just hunt anyway. Alright. So you guys sound like you have a plan, I'm assuming. You're about to head out of town, I take it? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, Ismark. Uh, Chance will kind of walk up and pull out uh, two pieces of chalk. Kind of hand to him. Um, if we get separated... Uh, things don't go according to plan. I'll leave markings on the uh, on some trees. Any crossroads you see, look for maybe uh, one of the trees. It won't be far from the edge. I'll mark it like this, and he kind of shows like uh, a little a little marking that he does. Uh, I'll mark it with my chalk of my own. If we've headed in a direction, turn back. What not? All right. So you so, kind of give uh, him a little key. Like yeah, just like a little, a little, like a little cipher for um, various things that he would do in his smuggling. All right, cool. Um, uh, Ismark actually looks at it quite intently and uh, just just nods along and seems to be focused. Like he doesn't want to um, miss anything. Every once in a while, he gives a glance to Arena, and then um, he's he, he, you start to notice that he's tearing up a little bit uh, because he knows that it's about to about time to say goodbye and um, he looks over at arena and uh, uh, moves over to to her and says Irina sister my heart goes with you these people are good people I have seen it at work oh did I tell you they freed the Durst children souls from the cursed house in town freed their souls yes their souls are no longer imprisoned by the darkness that corrupts this land. Then there is hope after all. She kisses his forehead and takes his hand. I will think of you. I will think of our papa. Yes. Farewell, Ismar. Farewell, Irina, my sister. We will meet again on the morrow. And with that, he just kind of turns his back and he marches up the stairs, leaving you guys to your own devices. Obviously, uh, everybody can make a perception check. <laughs> I rolled a one. So no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Nyla's blissfully unaware. She's like, okay, let's go. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Probably yes. <laughs> Hildegard's not far behind. She's, you know, Nyla's got one foot out the door. Hildegard's just kind of, all right, let's let's get this over with. And and um, Yag, Zana, particularly Zana and Chance, you guys notice, and Arena, you notice as well because you you know your brother. He's fighting hard to be strong and not break down. And you kind of figure that he's about to go in his room, and that's when he'll lose it out of sight. He's trying to be. Um, some old form of uh, masculine uh, that you know. Hey, it's not. Don't show weakness in front of the people that you're you're saying goodbye to. So, but he fought back tears the whole time. But you noticed that everybody notices that, and, and he stayed strong and manly. And he went into the uh, into the room. I didn't. The, Arena's acting so friggin' good. I'm like, I'm like, oh man, this is like a real goodbye, man. Oh god. <laughs> So, yeah. You know. <laughs> well, thanks for writing a tragedy, Kenny. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but, all right, so um, so you guys are uh, heading out, I take it, correct? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. Do we want to try to stealthily leave the city? 
So that she, Irene is not seen going out? I'm thinking yes. Okay. Um, I believe my spell lasts for about an hour. Do you, I, Miss Irina, do you think that would be more than enough time to leave the city? Let me think. An hour's time. If we are fast, your spell should be more than enough. Yeah, this is more of a small village, so it's probably 15 minutes from one side of the village to the other. Okay. Then I'll cast it right now, and I will cast uh, Pass Away the Trace. So we add plus stealth to our uh, stealth roll. Plus 10 to our stealth rolls. Really good for me. I got disadvantage. (laughs) Yes. Oh, no. All right, so you guys are making your way out of the village. I need um, stealth rolls with the bonus from everyone. If you guys are trying to kind of uh, make your way out, you know, sort of unnoticed a little bit more under the cuff. Bear in mind, you're all foreigners uh, to these people. Those of, those of them that you can see. I'm going to take advantage. Okay. And I need a stealth roll from Arena. There we go. Perfect. Fifteen. <laughs> Don't forget to add ten. Oh yeah, so twenty-five. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a natural it's a 14. one. <laughs> That's still a fourteen. That's right. Oh, That's yeah. right. Skill skill checks, I guess, technically don't. Yeah, you don't, don't necessarily it, have. I, I just have people every once in a while describe kind of a uh, a natural one. So even with your fourteen, you know, you're still sure, kind sure, of sure. stepping on, managed to step on quite a few twigs when you're first walking out of the yard. It's like any twig that's in the yard you step on until eventually um, <laughs> Zana, Zana, you catch him maybe and shush him a little bit. Now you're, yeah. you're stepping mm-hmm. a little bit slower after yeah. the spell. So Chance gets kind of defensive. defense too. He's like, what well, is this? This is a professional. Don't, don't worry about it. And <laughs> just urging her off. Yeah, you watch as the, the shadows begin to elongate from walls or pathways. Anything that gives off a shadow seems to cling to your body and correlate and coalesce to your form. Well then, shall we go? This is pretty sweet, Zana. She's like looking at her hand. <laughs> like, you know, there's like shadow stuff kind of on it now. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I just learned it quite recently. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys are. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And a parasol. Oh, Irina takes her dress coat and a parasol, looking much like a goth kid wearing some armor. <laughs> <laughs> Lead the way. All right, so um, you guys are heading out of the the village. The only thing that I've noted that really happens is uh, occasionally you, you kind of um, uh, see some people milling about. They, they don't seem to be quite as in a rush based on um, the past without a trace to get to get out of your sight. Or there's not as many stairs from, you know, drawn blinds or anything like that that you've noticed. You do hear um, an odd uh, sound of a cart. It almost seems to be approaching you as you're, as you're leaving the village, and you see an old woman pushing a cart, and there seems to be steaming hot um, uh, pastries on the top of it. Like they, it looks like they're, they're fresh, and then the cart below the cart has um, kind of a makeshift of it, and, and she seems to be cooking pastries, and she's she's kind of pushing up to you guys as as um, uh, pushing towards you guys. Are you guys attempting to avoid her by using your stealth? Avoid all people, or...? I think we're gonna avoid all people. Yeah, I was thinking that, too. Okay. Irina looks torn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Yog might as well, right? And, uh, Yog's perfectly fine with this stuff he has in his cauldron. Oh, I gotcha. All right, so yeah, oh. she she just kind of keeps pushing her cart down the down the street, um, uh, li- like just a little old woman with a pastry cart. She's kind of hunched over, and 
you swear as, as like you kind of wait waiting in an alleyway for her to pass and you're all uh leaving you swear that like uh one second you, you one of you glance back and you swear she's looking right at you guys with like kind of a weird grin let me uh let me give you guys what she looks like hold on Do you think it's too late to turn around? Or just... <laughs> um... Uh, I, 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 I can go to talk to her and make sure she doesn't follow us. Uh, I can meet you somewhere. Don't stay too far away from me. Otherwise you won't get the effect of my uh, best friend. Uh, that's alright. I won't make much attention just myself anyway. Chance, before you go, uh, raspberry tart. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, uh, Chance will just kind of really nonchalantly, uh, try to, like, you know, kind of veer off from the group a little bit, kind of do a loop around an alley and come back to the old one. And basically try to distract her a little bit as, uh, as the rest of the party's moving on. All right, so we're going to start with you for a few minutes. Um, guys... It's up to you if you want to take a break, if you want to listen in. Uh, I just ask that you don't bet a game. Um, and I'm sure all of you guys know that. So, um, but yeah, so you, you make your way around to her and she goes, Ah, oh, handsome young one. You look hungry. Perhaps you are coming for a pastry? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, of course, Martin. Uh, what have you got in the way? Is it pastry? And he's going to even, like, walk on the other side so that it, in order to look at him, she has to look in the, like, the opposite direction where the party's going. All right. Um, so he says, well, she says, well, I have stuff that is sweet. I also have meat pies. It is totally up to you, young man. What would you like? Well, I'm actually a sucker for a good savory pie. Uh, that being said, too, uh, I do have a sweet tooth. They got something in the line of raspberry. I do, young man. Oh, you are doing an old woman's bones good. I love to feed those that are hungry. And she pulls out a, um, uh, she she pulls out two pies like from the oven, and then the raspberry. She goes, the raspberry is fresh and hot, and you're just assaulted with this incredible smell of just sweet, delicious smelling um, uh, pies uh, and then of course you, you kind of get a, a little bit of a sort of a steamy meat flavor from the meat pie so he's she's she's got both and she goes it will only cost five copper for the both you see she's kind of leaning on the cart a little bit like she's she's having trouble standing let alone pushing this heavy thing around Perhaps if you tip well, oh, cool. the old this old woman may be able to retire to her home for the day. <laughs> uh, well, well, as it so happens, I'm in a bit of a rush, and I don't exactly have change to spare. So, <clears throat> and he's going to take out a, a whole gold piece, and uh, he's going to take one more of the savory pies to go, I guess. All right, so it gives and, you... Now he's kind of relaxed. He's looking over, like, kind of beyond the shoulder of the old woman to the other. He's like, ha, suckers. All right, so, yeah, she gets, um... So, yeah, she gives you two meat pies and the... the ra I'm assuming, it, did you say it was a raspberry tart you got? Yeah, a raspberry tart. All right. So she hands you those and says, Oh, and, and enjoy your pies and be very the long night make sure your dreams are pleasant young man and she starts kind of squeaking the cart off you know limping behind it looking back at you giving you a smile every now and again all right yeah he will uh, he'll take the, the pies and kind of put them in a little this little bag i guess or making sure they're not gonna crush and uh he will walk in the general direction of the party all right so let's go try to step into an alley and lose anybody that might be following him all right let's go ahead and um just give me a you you, you kind of lost the stealth ability of zana's spell but um go ahead and roll stealth again just in case 
minus the 10. Okay, that's a good roll anyway. All right, so um, now let's go back in time a couple of minutes to when Chance leaves. What are you guys up to as, um, as he goes back to, to make his way back to the old woman? You guys are reaching the edge of the town pretty well at this point. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess just keep going. I, I would probably want to keep an eye out to see if anybody is, like, noticing us, though, or paying any attention to us, you know. I would also like to do that, too. Just really right. paranoid right now. <laughs> All right, so you make an active perception check. Yeah, go ahead and make yes. the, uh, perception rolls, please. All right, uh, Zana, you're almost positive that there's no one around. Uh, you do see Chance kind of slip into an alleyway right as you're on the edge of the town, so you know that he'll be catching up to you very soon. Okay. And um, He should catch up to us in about relatively five to ten minutes, depending on his conversation. Awesome. Meanwhile, Irina, having been under house arrest recently, is as giddy as a flea in a flea market right now, just looking around, taking in nature, and maybe asking a little too many questions of the party. Like, your name was Hildegard, correct? Uh, she kind of has a little start at... Uh, she, she wasn't expecting you to just randomly start talking to her, so she kind of flinches a little looking at you. Yes, that is what I said. Adorned in beautiful feathers. Is this it's... fashion of your country? It is not. It is a... Um, it is in reference to my deity, my goddess, the Raven hey, Queen. Oh. A woman of faith. And what of you, sweet Nyla? Hmm? What about me? She smiles, though, like, nicely. <laughs> you dress so... so casually for such work. She actually admires your dress. Oh, thank you. She, like, picks up a, like, a little bit of her skirt. Um, yeah, uh, like, you know, like, kind of looking at it. I, I normally don't do this this sort of thing, so this is all kind of new to me. <laughs> and whatever for? Oh, why am I doing it? Yes. Uh, well, we just sort of like stumbled into here, and so I, I guess I'm kind of good at it. So I'm I'm look I'm looking for my fiance, and I kind of wonder if maybe he's here. So I'm okay with traveling around if I can find him. A lost lover, my condolences. Oh yeah, thank you. I I'm pretty positive I'll find him though. <sighs> she whisks away into her thoughts, thinking of loved ones, <laughs> and then zones in on Zana. <laughs> And what of you? <laughs> Zana really flinches really hardcore as soon as she pays attention to her hardcore. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I'm a widow? I, 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 I'm sorry, what was the question? A, a widow? A, a wood elf. Ah. You should oh. not stop her, dear. I'm sorry. <laughs> She gives you a hearty pat on the back and proceeds to have unnecessarily unfounded girl time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'll, I'll give you an inspiration token. So just, just, um, do you know what inspiration is? Heavens no, but yes. Okay. Yeah, you can have an inspiration token. So uh, just roll advantage you whenever you choose. For the uh, for the girl time. I can't exactly yell at the program to do what I want. So where would I go find that? Oh no, just just remember it. Just make a note on a side sheet of paper or something. 
that you have it and, and uh, you can only have one at a time. So if there's a role that's really bad that you want to be better and have advantage on, you just say I'm using inspiration and it'll be the higher of the two numbers that rolls. Ooh, I like it. All right, so, um, all right, so you guys move on. Eventually, uh, uh, Chance, uh, these guys are, they, they're just kind of chatting, having, doing a little bonding. Uh, you're you're kind of come shuffling out on the edge of the village uh, right as they're about to leave the village, and um, you're kind of shuffling up to them and uh, take you guys. Yeah, to like hands in his quick. pocket, the whole shebang. Like, now give me a yeah, second. As soon as he, he, he shuffles up right next to him and then kind of matches their uh, their speed and slows back down again. He's a, he's actually he's a pretty nimble fellow and moves, moves pretty quick when he wants to. So catch I'll up be like. Hard. Pretty sneaky. How'd it go? Well, not bad. Uh, seemed just like an old woman. I don't know. She had some pastries. Uh, I did manage to find one raspberry for you. And uh, <gasps> got two same. Well, Get out of there, Seamus. Seamus! She takes it very happily. Careful now. That's hot. Fresh out of the oven, that one was. Fuck out of there. Come on. Seamus, get out of there. Great. What are you doing? And I thought I'd be a savory pie for someone else who, uh, well, maybe getting tired of York's cooking. Not that that's, uh, you know, it's a guarantee. I have a question. What's a pie? What? What? <laughs> they don't know. You, you what? L look at this, and Chance is going to kind of pull open the pie. This here. It's one of the god's greatest <laughs> creations. This is a savory pie. <laughs> now imagine, close your eyes, seal them just tight, only for a moment. <laughs> she does so immediately. I want you to <laughs> search for the smells. I've got carrots, peas, baked onions, and uh, all in a, in a nice broth of a good stew. And I don't really savory beef. <laughs> well, okay. And you know, put it like put the pie in her nose. <laughs> The buttery, flaky pastry seals it all in, traps all that good flavor. Oh. Well, it smells really nice. Irina bites her finger. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you go. Uh, let be it, far be it from me to keep someone from their first ever savory pie. You can oh, have this one. Well, yeah, so yeah. It's yeah. Miss Irina's. <laughs> uh, she's got a raspberry. Yeah, well, you try this. I, I have well, three I'd pies. be willing to share. Oh, I, I thought that was the same pie, but okay. No, uh, this is a sweet pie. So now, see, close your eyes again. And he's gonna go to the whole spiel, but this time it's like a, a sweet pie that he's just. She does so <laughs> Irina just gets hungrier. <laughs> You don't have to worry about it, but if she has to say you did, I'll go back or you can do it when you come back. Because aren't you? Yeah, so I guess as we keep keep walking, uh, Chance is going to eat his pie and... And then like five minutes later, and like Sana like, goes up to next to Chance and like, This is the greatest invention ever! Why has no one ever told me about this? So you guys are <laughs> eating the pies, correct? Yeah. Irina's eating the pie, uh, Zana's eating the pie, Coleman's eating the pie, and who else? Hmm? Yeah, we only have three pies. I guess if anybody wanted to share, Colin would offer it. But I would also share. Irina shares hers as well. Sure. Well, if everyone's sharing, then I'll I'll take some. Take some. All right. And Yag and Hildegard, do you guys eat the pie? Yog is just gonna look grumpy and grab something <laughs> at random from his cauldron and start chewing on it, whatever it is. <laughs> You guys have upset the cook. You're eating somebody else's food. <laughs> All right, so I need, um, and what about Hildegard? I... Oh, God. Yeah, well, since everybody's doing it, she's just going to go ahead and try a bite. Okay. It almost it almost seems like when you're coming to get like a bite from Chance, like with, with his pie, like he's kind of walking a little bit behind Yogg. It might even he might have bought an extra pie just to kind of spite Yogg. Like, <laughs> like he, he knew it might upset him, and he's got he's got like the more it goes on, he's got just kind of like a shit eating. All right, so um, 
Yeah, Yogg's looking around grumpy, but everyone but Yogg, I need a constitution saving throw. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lovely. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm rolling for crap. Hey, yo. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. Wait, do I have the highest con saves? Yeah, you Maybe do. not y'all. Y'all probably has more. Uh, Arena, there's actually just to the um, just to the right of that, there's actually a box that says saves in it. If you want to hit oh, it, you'll okay. see. Yeah. Oh, hey, don't oh we get a roll God. advantage because of the cooking? Remember, Yogg said oh, yeah. advantage on Constitution for twenty four hours. Um, and twenty four hours. Yeah, it's been it's hours. been twenty four hours. It has not been twenty four hours. So yeah. Yes. I mean, so, 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 go again. Oh, did not do much better. Irina did not get it because all right, so because she she didn't eat Yogg's cooking. Um, yes, just te uh, text me when you get there. As soon as you get there. You don't have to call, just text. Sorry, guys, my uh, son's about to go, so I'm talking to him. No, for you're a fine. Second. Is he not letting you out? Just go. Yeah, when they when they're driving, like. Certain times of the day, they uh, I, I let them use my car. So, considering I can't drive it right now, I mean, what the hell, right? <laughs> All right, so uh, back on back on task. So uh, let's see, who, anybody, get below a thirteen? Oh yeah, that would be me. <laughs> so Arena, Nyla, and no, Zana did not. Well, okay. she did because of the advantage. 15. I had advantage because of the constitution. Yeah, you got. Yeah, you got a butt. Yeah. So, uh, Zana, no, I'm not. Yeah, Zana's, Zana's fine. Okay. So, uh, Irina, at first, when you, when you first bite into it, it just tastes absolutely delicious. Um, but mm. after a minute or two, it just turns to like ash in your mouth. Uh, it, it just tastes like you're eating like sawdust. So you spit it out. Um, now, uh, Nyla, you actually, um, it just still tastes delicious to you. Oh, okay. And Chance made it. So, yeah, um, yeah, I just needed to know. I'm making a personal note of who failed. But Arena, yeah, it tastes, uh, like ash. Like, it, it just, you know, you get that savory flavor, then you eventually just... While everyone's going on about how delicious the pies are, uh, you just feel like you want to spit it out. I uh, I do a quick sideways spit and <laughs> I turn back like nothing's wrong. Everything's fine. In fact, Yogg, she turns to, mmm, how are the pies? <laughs> Pastry, so. Mm. <laughs> Meat's better anyway. Alright, so Sorry, you guys are... He said meat's better anyways. Ah. Hmm. So, Arena, what do you... What, what sort of things do you like to do? Normally, you know, when you're Living not being here. chased by yeah. wolves and well, hounded yeah. by the Lord of the Land, yes, yes, you know, yes, right? Yes, yes. Well, and she gives a mischievous sideways glance, like she's about to spill some gossip on y'all. <laughs> and she gets real, real. So the tavern. I frequent back when I had my way to walk around these lands, and there were a few interesting folk. Granted, none of them returned after their march on Sprad. But, um, we would go hunting together. 
and a good drink or two. So and then she like spills water tea. But I know for a fact the baker was cheating on his wife for the tavern maid. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, scandalous. Well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I suppose when you're in a small town like that, everybody knows everyone, for better or for worse. Oh yeah, I've noticed that when I would work at smaller towns. They really do. They, they know everything. Everybody. Oh yeah. A gift and a tragedy. Hmm? A gift and a tragedy. Yeah. Definitely. How long have you been, well, you said you hunted. Uh, do you travel much around these lands? Sadly, I cannot. There is only so far you can go before the shadows get you in the night. I hunted for fun, you see. Around then it was easier. But even then, people go missing, people go sick. It's been so gloomy, sometimes you just have to get away from it all. In fact, you know the rumors, as they say. It's impossible to be, to leave this place. I yeah, always so dreamed. Your told us. Sorry, what? I always dreamed of leaving. It seems well, so unreal. Maybe we can help you find a way, so you can leave this place, if you wanted to. Part of me wants to believe you, sweet Zana. I really do. But part of me also knows that Strahd will stop at nothing. You know, it's interesting. When I first saw what I assumed was him, I honestly don't remember it. You don't remember it? Like he was like a shadow on my windowsill. I'd had a few drinks that night, and I was at my vanity changing for the night, and I swear I saw the loneliest pair of eyes And she trails off and starts thinking. And actually twirling her hair in her fingers. Hmm. And as you guys are moving along, talking, and Arena's telling her story, uh, you guys come to a... You guys can hear the sound of running water. The mist is actually kind of starting to close in. Uh, very heavy. Uh, not dissimilar to when most of you first arrived in Barovia. Uh, but as you approach the river, you can see a river that flows as clear as a blue winter sky cutting through the valley. In fact, it's it's kind of a nice sight uh, compared to the bleak uh, sort of drab gray that the mist uh, gives to everything else around here. Um, but as if to kind of lend credence to that bleak uh, drabness that I was just, the aforementioned bleak drabness, uh, the uh, the um, there is a very plain stone bridge uh, arching the, um, the length of the river, arching over the length of the river, about 50 feet, um, at two points. And then, then let me see if you guys, can everybody see the party token right here where I moved it? Yes. 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 Yep. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you arrive. You've been traveling for probably about a good hour, two hours now. And you arrive to that bridge and the uh, river Idlis, as Irina would know it. And that, Ooh. guys, will bring us to our first break for the session. Yay!